I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and I'm going to introduce you to the three amigos of opening your forms in, in Access. And uh, those amigos are uh, on open, on load, and on current, which are three events that happen uh, behind the scenes uh, that you can put some code into in order to automate things or check to make sure that data is okay and things like that. And, uh, and so if you do a lot of access development, these three events will be critical. Uh, every time you want to open a form, you'll have the option to do all kinds of different things. And when you scroll through the records as well, uh, you can check as you scroll through the records, you can have some code that runs in between so that you know, to check and make sure that things are okay or do validation or whatever. And so without further ado, let's get to our events on Form Open in Microsoft Access. Okay, so I'm gonna start this uh, demonstration. Uh, this is a file that we've used in several other examples. I've got a candy table here, and you can see if I open it, I've got, you know, some chocolate, I've got some gum circles, and, and there's some prices and things like that. And uh, so this is a very simple example. So we'll use this candy table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the form wizard and I'm just gonna create you know, a default form, uh, how it will come out of the wizard. I'll, I use the candy table. I'm gonna take all the fields, put them on that form. And, uh, and then I'll just take the default options and I'll just call this candy event, I guess, or something like that. Um, and so what that's going to do is uh, that's going to give us a form that we can use to highlight our, uh, you know, the, the events that I'm going to show you here. So as you can see, the ID field, candy type, candy name, and candy price are all in there. Uh, this is the default layout from the wizard, and I can scroll through the records. Uh, there's 12 records. Um, so we can sort of pretend that this is our uh, this is our user form, and we want to uh, do some stuff as the form opens, uh, and also, you know, when the form scrolls to each record. So, uh, so the first thing that we'll do is uh, we'll go into our design view here, and as you can see, if I click somewhere, you got to make sure that you, that you're in the right place. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, if if I look at the uh, the property sheet, I want to make sure that I'm on the form. So I can click in the gray area just below there, as you saw, uh, or I can go into the list and I can choose the form from the list. So there's a couple ways that you can get to the form properties, but you want to make sure that you're on the form properties when you do this. And so that'll expose these events for us to look at. So as you can see, you know, there's the current uh, the current event, the load event, and the on open event and uh, those are kind of like the three main events that you'll that you'll use when you're loading up forms uh, and designing forms for users to uh, to use there are some other ones you know there's a before insert uh, after update and things like that that we'll cover in in uh, in other videos but uh, these three are the ones that I find um, I use by far the most um, in all the access applications that I've deployed. And so we can click on the ellipsis in the form open since that's the first one that gets fired. And I'm gonna um, just grab the uh, window here. So when I uh, chose to use the uh, code uh, editor, uh, you'll see it created it automatically created this uh, form open uh, sub and it's got a cancel argument there. And uh, so, that's going to allow us to run some code. Uh, and if you remember a previous episode where I did report open, this one's very similar. Uh, it acts in a very similar way. Um, so this this code actually runs before almost before the form is opened. And uh, it allows you to actually cancel opening the form. Uh, but it does expose, a, you know, the data. Um, so that you can check some things, um, and that's very, very handy thing to, to have. Um, so, you know, for example, here I can say, 
you know, the form event happened, form open event happened. And uh, so if I save that and I go back to my uh, form here, I can open it and we can, we can take a look. And so I can go and uh, close the design view and I can just find my candy events form and I can just double click it. And as you can see, the, uh, the event fired, the form open event happened. And so you could have run some other code to do things in your application, but um, that's how you could do it. You could log the fact that, you know, you could do some logging uh, that the user opened it or, or things like that. And so you can see it opens with the data all in there and, uh, and, and that's kind of exactly what we wanted to see. So we'll go back to our design view. And uh, now what we'll do is we'll take a look at the next, uh, the next one in the sequence, which is on load. And on load is very, very uh, handy because that's gonna, um, that's gonna fire an event when the data gets loaded into the form. And so, so, also very very handy probably one that I use more uh, more than uh, form open uh, form open is usually uh, when you want to have the option to cancel opening or something like that but form load is you can start working with the data uh, a little bit more than uh, than in form open and so now you can see when I open it I got both of those events um, normally we would not open it from design view. Um, we would open it straight like this, and so this is more what it would look like. Um, so here we go. So there you go. It's a form open happened, and then the, the form load happened. So um, form load is a little bit more useful, I find. Uh, they're both useful, but I use form load a bit more on that opening sequence uh, because you will discover that there are some things that you cannot do in form open as opposed to form load uh, with respect to the data and stuff like that. Um, so that's very, very handy. Uh, in form load, you could also do things like, you know, you could, you know, you can look at the data that's in there. Um, you can, you know, you could say uh, the candy type is, and then I'll put the uh, candy type, uh, candy name or, or candy type in there. Uh, I think there's a type field as well. Let's just check that. Um, I usually check just by uh, putting the period after to activate the IntelliSense to make sure I got the, the name right. <laughs> but from here we can do the same thing. Uh, we can, you know, we'll close our design and open it as if it was being opened by, you know, in your application. So there's the form open and then the form load. And then we can see that we grab the, the first record, the chocolate, and, uh, and then the form opens and as you can see we can scroll through and those events are happening uh, however you, you'll notice that we you know we got the, the name chocolate there but when we scroll through um, it's not changing uh, we're not getting that message about the chocolate and so to get past that we're going to use the form current event now pay attention here I'm going to use a different way of getting our event uh, here and so you'll see I'm using the uh, the drop downs at the top and I'm going to choose form and then I'm going to choose current and that's going to give me the form current event in much in the same way that uh, that you can do it from here in the form to, or in pardon me in the form properties where you click the ellipsis here um, you'll see it's already populated that event procedure in there um, after I chose it from the the code editor drop downs and so that's an alternate way for you to uh, to get your events uh, so you don't have to go back and forth to the to the form design if you don't want to so in form uh, current what, what I'll do is I'll throw in the same kind of message I'll say the form current event happened and then I'll do a message box and do a similar thing uh, about the candy type so that we can see uh, uh, see a message each time that the that the record is changed in the form below and so that's very very handy uh, when you want to know what's happening as a user goes through each record so I'll close that I'll save it and double click you can see the form open event happened the next thing that happens is the form load event happens um, it on the form load it says the candy type is chocolate 
and then it says the form current. Now it's, it's saying our current record uh, event happened, and that one also, it says chocolate. Um, so those all happen in sequence. Um, and so now if I scroll through, um, you can see now I get, oh, the, you know, the form event, form current event happened. And when I click there, now the, the type has changed to gum circles, which is uh, the type that is on the current record. And so you'll get this event each time that you go through. Um, so if I keep scrolling, um, you can see uh, now it's toffee and, you know, that's the, that's sort of the, the current record. And so if you want to have an event that happens as the user goes through and not just when the form first opens, uh, on current is your friend. And so that is a nice way of doing it. So you can also do other kinds of stuff like, uh, you know, you could do almost anything in, in form current, uh, in, in any of these events, but uh, you can, you know, change messages or do validation. Um, I've seen in some of the uh, access apps that I've worked on and and also created, I've, I've seen, you know, thousands and thousands of rows of code uh, on the form current. Um, because in some applications, especially in very complex environments, um, just when a record changes, you know, you might have a massive form with, you know, a whole bunch of subforms on tabs and all kinds of things like that. And form current is where that's sort of like the context. So when the user scrolls, say, on a, you know, on a medical form that has a whole bunch of subforms that you need to do validation, well, when they scroll to the next patient, there might be all this code that runs. Um, and so in this case, what I'll do is I'll change that message. Uh, I created a message box, or pardon me, a text box uh, for a message there. And um, so now you can see our, all of our events go through just like we did before. And um, they happen in sequence. And, and now I've, I've created a message that gets populated in the current. So as I scroll through each of these records, um, you know, that's the, uh, uh, I populated another text box, which was, you know, something that was useful for the users, uh, say. And so I could actually get rid of the message box here and make it a little bit smoother, um, you know, and, uh, and that, you know, that could be something that, you know, you don't want to have a message box. You just want that uh, particular thing to, to happen on current. And so, we do get our initial text boxes, but now as I scroll through, you'll see that that, that little uh, uh, text box got populated and that's what we wanted to do uh, as we scrolled through the records. So I might go back into my design here and actually put a proper label on my, <laughs> on my uh, uh, text box there and uh, I can close that and then open it and as you can see, uh, the events are all happening. And now when I scroll through, you can you can see that it sort of uh, the on current is very, very handy. Um, so each of the events is good for, um, you know, different things. Um, and so uh, one of the things that you can do uh, that I'll, I'll go to now is we'll take a look at and I'll I'll open the code a different way. So again, using the ellipsis. Um, and uh, you can jump right to the procedure that you want to edit. And I'm going to change this form open one, and I'll demonstrate how to stop the form from opening um, uh, using the cancel argument that you see there. So this is one of, one of the advantages of, of using uh, form open. Um, so I can say, you know, if, if uh, <clears throat> me, you know, candy type is equal to chocolate, um, then you know, then we're going to, you know, stop this from, from happening. Um, so we'll put a cancel equals uh, minus one. Uh, actually, I'll do it. I'll do a full um, block here. So the, uh, <clears throat> so we'll say, you know, message box, uh, I don't like chocolate <laughs> or something like that. Um, and, uh, and so if, if we open the form and the first record 
has chocolate on it, we're going to cancel opening the form. And, uh, and so um, that's something that uh, is also very handy. You could you know, check the user or check time or whatever. Um, you can do all kinds of uh, things you know, just before you open it. And I did a debug compile there, which is very handy. That'll point out any errors if you have missing end, end ifs and stuff. So there you go. So now it says, I don't like chocolate. And then when I hit OK, now the form does not open. Um, and so I can try that many times, and it doesn't open. Um, and so that's um, something that is very useful in on open, or yeah, in on open, which is called form open in the code, form underscore open. So if I change that to fizzers instead of chocolate, and then I save it, and I go back, um, and close the form, and then open it as if we were a user, now you can see it jumped straight through to the form load event, and that is how you use form open, form load, and form current uh, when you're opening forms in Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use the three events, uh, form open, form load, and form current in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. Uh, click the bell when you see the bell and put any comments or questions you might have in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.